Jalen Johnson believes he's earned more money on his next contract, and he may not be wrong. We're going to talk about that, plus we're going to discuss Jaquan Brisker playing his best football right now, and is it at the right time? And then finally, we're going to take a look at Terrell Smith and say, hey, regardless of what happens with Jalen Johnson, the Bears cornerback situation may be in a good place regardless. We're going to get to all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every single social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So Jalen Johnson has been talking more about his season, about you know the money that he thinks he deserves, and he said this, after the season, I feel like there's not anything you can say that I'm not doing. I feel like before uh, this season, uh, for three years, I've covered at a high rate, and it's been like, oh, can he get an interception? Can he get interceptions? So, like, after this year, you can't say I can't cover at a high level. You can't say I'm not an elite cover guy. You can't say that I can't take the ball away. You can't say that I can't tackle. So, I mean, realistically, what is it that I can't do that deserves top pay, top corner money? I feel like now there's definitely opportunity and room, especially if I touch all pro. I feel like there's not anything that I haven't done that's deserving of it. Now, that's quite a bit of change from where it came with Jalen Johnson coming into the season, right? We talked about and covered here in the introductory press conference to start the season. When Jalen Johnson was asked about his contract, he flat out said, I'm going to let the agent that's going to work out what he's going to work out with. I want to play football. And that may be because he understood what he needed to do to kind of prove that he deserved that next level money, right? And while a lot of his detractors have said things like, oh, well, he's not this. He doesn't get interceptions, so he can't be a top corner because he can't do that. And what what Jalen Johnson is saying that is valid and that some more casual football fans won't understand is the fact that, yes, you can be an elite cover guy without necessarily getting interceptions. Now, he has been getting way more interceptions here as of late. Mixed some, it definitely missed some pick sixes, right, in, in times like that. But he has four interceptions so far on the year. He has nine pass deflections so far in the year. And he's he's absolutely playing extremely well. He is uh, listen, he has five interceptions in his in his career. Four of those have come in now this season. He, it, this was his first season getting interceptions since 2021. Jalen Johnson, at the very least, has proven what he can be in this league. And I know there are still going to be doubters, especially when you talk about the type of money. But when you look at all pro, pro football focus, Jalen Johnson has graded as the top cornerback in the NFL this season. And as the Chicago Bears defense goals gets better and trends upward, his play has has risen with that as well. Now, again, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, it it it, it it's the, the bull the Bears have to do their checks and balances, right? You want to pay a player, but you want to make sure that you're not overpaying and that you're getting a, a or that you're paying them at a rate that's uh, conducive to you also filling out other needs that you have on the team. But like I've said always with Jalen Johnson, and this will never waver for me, he is 24 years old. He just turned 24 in April. It's four months until turning 25 years old. He fits the timeline of this cornerback, of this defense, and you want to keep a player that was homegrown that you drafted if can be. Now, again, am I saying that the Chicago Bears should just overpay for Jalen Johnson if he wants a ridiculous amount of money once they get to the to the table? Uh, the discussion table? No, I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying this is that Jalen Johnson has done just about everything that you could ask him to do. Is he a perfect cornerback? No, but no player in the NFL is. Yes, he still has things that he needs to work on in this game. He still can improve, but there's a reason why typically defenses don't throw to where who Jalen Johnson's guarding. Now, one could say on that, and you guys know I like to present both sides of the argument. One could say, well, the last couple of years he's he's had rookie cornerbacks next to him. And, of course, those other defenses are going to pick on those rookie cornerbacks more than they try to go at Jalen Johnson, who is a veteran in this league. But at the end of the day, like, you got to look at what you're doing. And, like I said, because he's grading out as one of, not one of, he's grading out as the highest cornerback grade this season. It just is what it is. Jalen Johnson is worth keeping on this team. And he's worth, to me, using. If, if you go to that, that negotiating table and you can't come to a deal, you franchise tag him and hope that you're going to be able to work it out later down the road. Because Jalen Johnson is the type of talent, in my opinion, that you want to keep. Now, no, like I said, I'm not saying that you should overpay him. I'm not saying that you should just give him whatever he wants and 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 that be damned. Um, but at the end of the day, you you want to take care um, 
of your of your players and you want to take care of people who have been here in the city of Chicago and want to be here. Now, if something comes out that Jalen Johnson just doesn't want to be in Chicago, he wants to go somewhere else so he can compete for X, Y, Z. All right. At that point, you, 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 you look at it and you say, hey, listen, we wanted to get something done. Jalen Johnson wanted to go a different route. And I'm not going to hold that against you. I'm not going to hold that against you. But but if, if you can, if this is worth fixing, you need to try to fix, you need to try to mend it, you need to try to bring Jalen Johnson back. Now, right now, Over the Cap projects Jalen Johnson's next deal to be worth $18.41 million per year. That's what, you know, between the statistics and things, that's about where he grades at. That will put him as one of the top uh, 10 centers in the league. It will put him a little bit above Xavier uh, Howard with the Miami Dolphins, who's the seventh. So it would put him as the seventh highest paid cornerback in the league, unless somebody else gets some more money this offseason. Again, is that perfect? You got two players tied for fifth. Um, I, I I think that that I think that he's worth that amount of money. I think so. Again, is that a? It, could it be a bit of an overpay? Maybe, but keep in mind, Jalen Johnson isn't done developing either. Like that's the, that's one of the biggest things in this is yes, Jalen Johnson is not perfect. He still has growth and things that he needs to do. Absolutely. But I think that you need to trust that he's going to get that growth and development in there because he's a hard worker. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think that Jalen Johnson has earned his money? Do you think the Chicago Bears should pay him per over the cap? They project that, that the value of that deal should be around $18.4 million. Would you pay that money for Jalen Johnson? Let me know what you guys think down below. But with that said, coming into this season, um, you know, the, the, the cornerback position was open. It was between Terrell Smith and Tyreek Stevenson. We knew Kyler Gordon was moving to that nickel uh, position. But both these guys have played extremely well, right? And I'm not necessarily, I don't want to get into uh, to comparing them per se. They're both rookies. They've had very different roles. Tyreek Stevenson has been starting. But when you look at both these players, you got to look at this cornerback position for the Chicago Bears should be good in a, in a solid position, even if Jalen Johnson does leave. That's why I said I like to talk about things from every perspective and standpoint because, listen, I don't always have all the answers. This is just a guy sharing his opinion. But when you look at the number, Tyreek Stevenson has played 433 snaps and, and, and Terrell Smith has played 166 snaps, in, both in coverage, right? And so when you look at how they compare with the numbers, Tyreek Stevenson is allowing 1.29 yards per snap and 6.88 yards per target, whereas Terrell Smith is averaging 1.10 yards per snap and, and 6.74 yards per, tar, per target. And so that's solid. That's, again, that, that, that is production that you can build off on in a cornerback uh, uh, duo. So, and then when you throw in Kyler Gordon in that as well, uh, Smith also allows 2.11 yards after the catch per reception, whereas Tyreek Stevenson has, has allowed 3.65 yards after the catch. So at the end of the day, it's this. These guys are both dogs, and they're showing that they can definitely be part of this. Tyreek Stevenson has 117 passer rating allowed, whereas Terrell Smith has a, a 89 passer rating in times where he's allowed to him. So the eight touchdowns allowed by Tyreek Stevenson brings that up a whole hell of a lot. Uh, Terrell Smith hasn't allowed nearly that amount of it when it comes down to it. And then Tyreek Stevenson also allows 70% of his targets to be completed, and, and Terrell Smith allows for 67% of that to be completed. And Tyreek Stevenson also has an 11% inter, uh, forced interception and completion rate, and Terrell Smith has a 7%. So again, when you look at these two guys, especially the fact that they're young, first-year players in the NFL, it's shown more than enough. They've been picked on. They're going to be picked on continually over these last four games. But we're showing that we have growth and depth on this team that could factor in for the long time. And like I said, Terrell Smith, 24 years old, uh, you know, not that much younger than, than, than Jalen Johnson. So still has development to do. Then when you look at Tyreek Stevenson as well, he's another player, 23 years old, right? He tur he'll turn 24 in April. He's only, like I said, uh, he's, what, 13 months. Young, older, younger than, than Jalen Johnson. These guys still have plenty of room to grow. If you can hold on to these guys, four guys, when you include Kyler Gordon together for a long time, that's how you start building depth. That's how you start. Yes, you got, you're going to have to pay Jalen Johnson. Eventually, you're going to have to pay the other two as well, and that may be where you start getting into a difficult conversation if you start having to pay two, three, four cornerbacks. But at, as of right now, you have everybody else in your cornerback crew is on rookie scale deals, right? And so because of that, this is the opportunity. If you're going to pay Jalen Johnson, this is the best time to do it. Even if you do it on a two or three year deal to kind of allow once uh, Kyler Gordon's up, once Tyreek Stevenson's up, what those guys start being up for future deals as well, you can make better decisions on that. But 
to me, you want to keep this cornerback crew together because I, I love the way they're developing on the back half of the season, and they're a big part of why the Chicago Bears have gone 3-2 and two in their last five games. So you want to keep that together. But let me know. Do you guys think maybe I'm just too much of a homer wanting to hold on to our guys? Maybe that's the case. Or do you think as well, like I do, that you should hold on to guys that, that have come in here and keep this cornerback crew together to see how they can develop over time together? Now, while not a cornerback, Jaquan Brisker is a member of this secondary and one of the leaders on this defense, and he is starting to play some of his best football right now. I use a lot of PFF grades, not because it's the end-all, be-all, but because it is something tangible that you can use and look at, and I think it is re reflective when you kind of look at the totality of other things of the game that's being displayed if you, like I said, combine it with other stats and what you see in the eye test and actually watching football games. But over, when you look at it, Jaquan Brisker over the last two weeks has had a 72.8 overall grade and a 70, I'm sorry, overall grade of 72.8 um, just overall, and then a grade of 74.6 just in coverage over the last three games. And that's per football focus. When you look at the 10 games prior to that, he had numbers of 57.9 overall and 49.3 in coverage. Now, that goes hand in hand with the secondary overall being better. Some of that also is the pass rush is better, which helps the pass coverage. But we're seeing right now that that Jaquan Brisker is playing some of the best football that we've seen him play in a while. And he's had 20, 20 stops and 468 snaps in the first 10 weeks. And now he's had 10 stops and just 180 snaps in the most recent three games. Jaquan Brisker is absolutely balling out. Last game, he had nine stops, 17 overall tackles. Uh, in, in the game as well, Jaquan Brisker is another player that's balling out for the Chicago Bears team at the right time. And as we're talking about this team potentially trying to win out, potentially trying to push for a playoff, a wild card spot, Jaquan Brisker is going to be a big part of that. That's why it sucks so much that you hear that he's uh, that he's out with injury. Well, he's on the he, he's on the injured list right now. We'll see if that maintains. But then you got to look at it through 11 games played so far for this season. He has 80 total tackles. 50 of that being solo, 31 be, 30 being assisted. He has one sack, two forced fumbles, one interception. This guy has absolutely played a great game for the Chicago Bears, and you've got to love to see the way that he's just playing for this team. He, he's laying it all out there on the line for him. Now, yes, he missed some time there, so there is that to play into it. When you look at his totals last season, he had 104 uh, tack, total tackles last season. 73 of those being solo, four sacks, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, and one interception. He is more than exceeding the pace of those numbers had he played in every game this season. And we still got four games left with more than enough time for him to pass the total number of tackles and everything else. Jaquan Brisker has made a step up from last season. Has it been the necessary step that some of us expected, me including, coming into the season? I won't even say that that's the case. I, I don't don't. I think I expected maybe too much. I expected too much of the team and the defense overall. I really thought that this team was going to be better earlier in the season. But Jaquan Brisker, much like many other parts of this team, is starting to play the best football here late, and that is why you have you hear some faith from Bears fans and the people around the Chicago Bears that this team could potentially make a push. Are we expecting them to make the the wild card? No. You got to take it game by game. I do think that this game against the Cleveland Browns is going to be a big test for everyone because while the Cleveland Browns have a huge injury report right now they got a lot of players out with injury this is still a team that's found a way to compete found a way to put up numbers find a way to produce no matter who's out there for them and I can't wait to see what the Chicago Bears do against this this is one of this is matter of fact the only game left that we have looked at as a tough game on our schedule and after that we have one of the easiest schedules left in the NFL and so if the Bears can get past this Cleveland Brown teams on Sunday and the defense is theoretically going to be a big part of that. If that happens, you are, you are looking at a team that is going to build even more faith in their potential to try to go on a run here to end the season. And so, you know, we'll be covering it here at Chicago Bears Central. I have a lot of faith for this team. Some of it may be unjust because it is what it is. But as you hear and see how this team's coming together, and even coming out yesterday that the locker room in Chicago is riding for Matt Eberflus. These guys like Matt Eberflus. Whether we, no matter the problems that we have with him as fans, the locker room right now is rocking with Matt Eberflus, and he has this team together and going on this type of run. And you've heard it from like Montez Sweat, who talked about how different this team is than what it was than the team he came from, and just the fact of the leadership from coaching. I, I wish I was in the locker room to see it personally. I wish I was, uh, because right now my view on Matt Eberflus is clearly not what the players have of him. But it doesn't matter what I have or what us have as fans, because at the end of the day, 
that thing will figure itself out. That's up to Kevin Warren and uh, Ryan Pose to figure out by the end of the season what they're going to do with Matt Eberflus. But I tell you what, what I want to see this team do towards the end of the season is win. And let's see if they can get it done. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform that we're on. You can, you can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago, Chicago Bears Central at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, Shy Town Up. But bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.